So as politicians and pundits continue to push this whole thing up against anti-Woken, anti-school districts and book banning and all of this, they actually begin to reveal where they actually stand on these and it's just pure hatred. The latest comes from a bunch of angry mama bears down in the small town near Houston, where now they've lost their minds over a classroom poster that has different races holding hands. Just way too woke, or is it not racist? We'll see. Here's the details. According to ABC 13 Eyewitness News in Houston, things started when a school trustee, Melissa Dungan, declared that she had spoken to parents who were upset about, quote, displays of personal ideologies in classrooms. Displays of personal ideologies in classrooms. Keep that phrase in mind as you think about the things that they're saying about their own personal ideologies. When pressed for an example, according to the news report, Dungan referred to a first grade student whose parent claimed they were so upset by a poster showing hands of people of different races that they transferred classrooms. And that's just your problem, bro. I wish I was shocked is what Dungan said of the poster. So I am aware that these trends have been happening for many years. Which trends, Melissa? More, Dungan was backed up by another trustee, Misty Odenweller, who insisted that the depiction of race mixing was in some way a violation of the law. The two women are part of Mama Bears Rising, which is a secret of far right group fueling the book banning mania in Conroe and the surrounding area down there in Texas again. And when another trustee asked Dungan if she personally objected to an illustration of cross racial friendship, she demurred, simply declaring that she was just trying to avoid, quote, situations like that. And when asked situations like what exactly, she didn't say because the situation was having your white kids near anyone else or even having the idea that they can be near anyone else without wanting to kill them. That's just her. Moral is her beliefs. Just so I understand, you are seriously suggesting that you find objectionable a poster indicating that all are included, is what Stacey Chase, another trustee, said. Dungan wouldn't say whether she found that poster objectionable, but just that she wants to avoid, quote, situations like that <laughs> by having the board adopt stricter standards and adhere to the state policies already in place, prohibiting teachers from displaying political items not relevant to curriculum. When asked if the Bible verses also were also in violation of existing policy and should be removed, Dungan struggled to respond. Right? Would you agree? Uh, trustee uh, Detrin Williams also asked her, and she says, "I don't know." So, uh, David, uh, we've got now more instances of this. We've seen the book banning uh, talks. We've seen them talking about uh, critical race theory and how it's teaching white kids to start believing that they're uh, that they should hate themselves because of the history, which wasn't actually them. It was other folks, but still, they should be connected to it somehow because we don't want to learn about it. And now, in this case, apparently, political ideologies. It's being a political statement being said. Personal ideologies put up in a classroom with multiple races with their hands in one poster. Because if that gets to that degree, who knows what could happen? What are your thoughts? Well, and I think you said this is first grader, right? She's got a first grader and she's concerned about that. I have a mm-hmm. rising first grader, kids going to start first grade. Um, I don't know of any first grader who's going to pay any notice to a poster of people with their hands together, different colors and their arms around each other. I mean, I suppose maybe if they were, I don't know, grabbing something they're not allowed to grab, I mm-hmm. would understand that. But um, really, that's how tricky it is. So I think, I think what everybody in that school should do is everybody should say is if her first grader is in the classroom, then all the other kids should transfer classes because she is teaching something to her kid, which is an abomination. She is teaching that kid to hate at a time when he doesn't, he's probably the innocent kid, but he's gonna learn from his parents, from his mom, that if somebody is different from you, if somebody wants to sort of be your friend, if somebody wants to be kind to you, you can't do that unless they look exactly like you. And that's racism, that's bigotry, that's xenophobia. And that's what she is teaching her first grader, come on. It's outrageous. Well, this is the thing they talk about indoctrination. They do realize that folks have parents at home and that they have things they see and live and experience outside of school. And in their case, it's the opposite of inclusion 
and loving other folks or accepting people for who they are. And in this case, it's gotten even further. You know, the, the veils are coming off further. They keep trying to have this, why she couldn't answer the questions. They keep trying to have these approaches to be like, this is a danger upon our children. It's coming for our kids. It's gonna come and hurt us. It's this and it's that. And when people finally peel it away, it's what I always say, just ask them who, what, when, where, why, how? When is this gonna happen? How's it gonna happen? What's gonna happen if your child in first grade sees this poster? Which by the way, David, I had maybe seen posters like that when I was in elementary school. Don't remember what grade level, but it did stick out to me. And this is where they think indoctrination happens. Because you'll see something as normal, like multiple different colored hands in one place and it being a positive thing. In fact, even just an acceptable thing, you can do it if you'd like. That's a problem. That's what they think indoctrination is because they'll suddenly see this as the norm. What they want to see as the norm is this continued separation. But as soon as say like Joe Biden gets into office, what can they not stop talking about? Where's the unity? Where's the unity? We're so divided as a country. Where's the unity? Where's the unity? Well, the unity comes when you actually accept other people. Unity is not just you talking about how everyone else is a horrible human being and that you're the best and you're better and you deserve more than anyone else in this country, land of the free, home of the brave. You know, it's it's this they try to mask what their hatred in saying everyone else is doing what it is that they're doing. And it's just not that. It's yeah. not even easily hidden. She should be honest and homeschool her kid and say it's because I don't want my kid to mix with anybody who's different. Just be honest about it and let your neighbors decide if they want to have anything to do with you or how you're whether or not you're going to be ostracized in your community. But to make the public school, to make any school have to sort of go through this nonsense, schools are facing real challenges, whether it's teacher pay, whether it's lack of resources, whether it's safety issues. For school to have to spend time, any time defending a helpful poster, which is expressing kindness is outrageous. And that's taking time away from real issues that elementary schools in particular need to be worried about. We've heard about groups like Moms for Liberty. And in, in this particular case, uh, Amanda Marcotte over at Salon wrote about some of these connections. Because look, these parents at these school districts, especially in these small towns, many times they do get affected or influenced by some of these larger groups. One being uh, the Claremont Institute, which is normally a Republican conservative think tank. But when uh, I guess when they see the opportunity, things open up like this. So this is what she wrote about what it is that the background, which many of these organizations like like Claremont influence these type of things to happen. This is some of the folks that work for them really fast. One of the many Claremont alumni is what the New Republic journalist Catherine Stewart profiles is Christopher Rufo, who spearheaded the recent hysteria over critical race theory in education. This is how these things start. Rufo's ingenious idea was to turn it into a catch all scare term that could be used to demonize any and all forms of anti-racist education, even something as previously non-controversial as a poster depicting an interracial friendship. This is how we got here. Claremont has promoted the work of Costin Alamariu, who holds a PhD in philosophy from Yale and writes under the name Bronze Age Pervert for some reason. He has declared that the quote, liberation of women is an infection that requires the most terrible convulsions and the most thorough purgative measures. That's what they're thinking, these are the folks who write for them. Again, these are the folks that are within that institute, but not necessarily are on this push. But this is their mindset. A little bit more, a frequent contributor to Claremont's online journal who writes under the name Raw Egg Nationalist argues that men and women shouldn't work together in the same spaces. <laughs> and describes Black Lives Matter protesters of 2020 as hideously ugly malformed people. Because whatever his opinion is of folks that he saw on videos has something to do with the stances and the things that are happening. Doesn't matter, always deflect and move to the next hateful line that you can. So this is, uh, this is the approach, this is the types of folks that are fueling this in case you wonder. The hate is not just something that just comes. As you can see, the same mother who's taking her kid out of this class, it's taught. So many times it has to be untaught, or at least people have to experience what real people actually are like before they realize it. <sighs> Let's move on to this next one, you guys. You got one more thought there? I was gonna say, men and women should not work in the same place. I will agree with that when it comes to me and my wife. <laughs> in the same place, but beyond that, the person's insane. The minivan Taliban is gassing up JR and they're driving all the country. The Moms for Liberty are crazy. Yes, Mom for Liberty also put forward that flyer maybe a couple months ago with the quote from Hitler. And one of those leaders went on Fox News talking about how we're quoting Hitler so we can warn you guys about the left. 